morning and welcome to United in Christ Lutheran Church's digital web space. We are so glad that you're here to gather with us on this morning as we gather to heed this call from Jesus to, to see where it is that he is staying, to simply, well, to simply come and see. Thank you. Thank you for being here to come and see and be a part of worship with us here this morning. We've got a great spot picked out for you up front here with Donna and Kathy uh, here at the front of the sanctuary. Uh, but we are so glad that you are here with us in worship today. We'll be getting started in just a minute. Uh, but thank you for being here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at United in Christ. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. Uh, just a few announcements before we get started. Youth group is meeting at 1 p.m. today over at Milton Lutheran Church. So if any of our youth would like to join us at 1 p.m., we will be there exploring some interesting questions about faith. Monday, um, January 16th, we will be doing our uh, theology on tap at Town Tavern at 7 p.m an adult continuation of exploring our <laughs> questions of theology and faith. Um, Tuesday, we have our council meeting here at 6.30. Wednesday, January 18th, the Worship of Music will meet at 10 a.m. Thursday, um, if you would like to help serve the meal for the Getting Ahead program, that will be at Milton Lutheran Church at 5 p.m. Um, if you have any questions about that, please contact the church office. Um, we have also been invited next Saturday by our siblings at Christ Lutheran in Lewisburg to, for a bingo night that will be from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, if you have any questions, there are more details on a sign-up sheet down in the fellowship hall. Oh, looking ahead, I'm like, I have, what do I have? <laughs> um, looking ahead, um, Sunday, January 29th, we have our Scout Sunday. They are super excited to just help take over and lead worship. Um, and looking even further ahead, uh, we are preparing Valentine's Day packages for our college students. So look at the bulletin or um, the newsletter for details about that. Are there any other announcements for the good of the whole? Yes, Kathy. Super Bowl Sunday, February 12th? Yes, yes. yes. Super Bowl Sunday is February 12th. We are, I, I was like, I don't remember all of the details about that. We are, we're, never done this I have never done it. Um, we will be collecting food items here at the church. And from what I understand, with, you get to basically put your vote or your food items with whichever team you think is going to win. Personally, I'm voting for the halftime show. <laughs> Let's go. So, thank you. Anything else? For now, let us just uh, prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude. Thank you.
please rise and body her in spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of renewal, we confess, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and the new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. We now sing our opening hymn, number 627, O Day Full of Grace, found on page 4 of the bulletin. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
us pray. Holy God, our strength and our redeemer, by your spirit hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you and joyfully find you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. and the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I've labored in pain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward is with God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, And my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers, kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he, he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched, Jesus walked by, and he exclaimed, Look! Here's the Lamb of God! And the two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. And when Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, And they remained with him that day. That was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who had heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. But you are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Please be seated. But at this time, I'd like to invite forward any of the young folks present in worship this morning for a special time together up front. Come on up. I'm so glad you guys are here today. Thank you for being here. I'm so glad to see you all. Thanks for being here in church this morning. How are we all doing this morning? Pretty good? Good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Nice. Glad to see you. Glad, glad you made it. Glad you made it. Come on up. Oh, here we go. Cool deal, guys. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I have a question for you guys this morning. Can you tell me what is, what's the coolest thing you've ever seen? Coda says. What's the coolest thing you've ever seen? Yeah, Coda. Um, at the end of a series of Pokemon. Um, Love where we're headed. Go catches um, a giant black and red Pokemon that is supposed to end the world. Oh, cool. And a world-ending Pokemon. That's a pretty cool thing to have seen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have uh, the VMAX one. Excellent. See, now that's an impressive Pokemon right there. Again, you know how to... You've got my number. That's very good. Very cool. What, what, what are some of the other coolest things we've seen? What are some cool things? Yes, Madeline. I like to draw my nails. That's a pretty cool thing, isn't it? I got it from... I got this notebook from Christmas. You got that notebook for Christmas. How cool is that? Thank you. I, tell, I know this is a very vague question. What are some cool things? What's the coolest thing you've ever seen, Scarlett? A bulldozer. That's very concrete. I like it. Coolest thing I've ever seen? A bulldozer. Nice. I like that. How about you, Wade? No idea. That's all right. Layla, I know you should. I got to tell you, I was driving down to visit some family on Friday, and you know what I saw? I saw a whole great big monstrous flock of snow geese. Have you ever seen snow geese before? Have you seen these birds? There had to have been, I'm not joking, thousands of them. And they were all flying together. They looked like a dark cloud in the sky all flying together. There were so many of them, I couldn't even count them all. And it looked like the sky was ripping apart from all these birds up there. It was kind of crazy. It was kind of wild. But, but here's the thing. As hard as I try to describe it, I don't, think, I don't think you've got as cool a picture in your head as what I saw. Because it was, it was pretty cool. Did the bird bite me? No, the bird didn't bite me. No, they were up in the sky. See, you're not getting it. No, no, no. They were up in the sky with the clouds. All I picture is a flock of birds just flying away from each other doing this. Yeah, but bigger. But way, way bigger. See, okay, um, I see if I can describe it. It's like it was like it was like there was a glitch in the matrix. Reality was being torn apart from all of these birds. Open it. You're not getting the picture, are you? Like a, like a, tornado. Like like a, a tornado. tornado. It was kind of like a tornado, but um, like, almost more, like like a VR headset. Like a like VR a headset that was getting ripped apart. I I don't know that you guys are getting. I see that. Like a kind of like a hurricane, but maybe more like the tornado. Yeah, it kind of felt like a video game where everything was getting ripped apart. Yeah, it was kind of like, but it was, but they were birds. You get that, right? They were birds in the sky. That's how crazy. Okay, see, here's the problem. I don't think, unless you were there, unless you'd seen it yourself, I don't think you're going to ever have the same picture that I have in my head, which is really tough, isn't it? Do you think you could describe the bulldozer as cool as it ever was? Yeah? I mean, you tried hard to describe the Pokemon, but how many people out there do you think are picturing what you had in mind? I have no idea because not a lot of people watch Pokemon. Because not a lot of people watch Pokemon. That's exactly right. See, here's the thing. Sometimes, sometimes we see these really cool things, right? But sometimes they're really hard to describe. Sometimes it's tough to give other people the same picture we have. And today, today in our story from Jesus, Jesus kind of says the same sort of thing. Jesus has some people who start following him in the story. And they want to know. They want to know what Jesus is about. And, and you think Jesus could describe to them all of the good things that he was going to do? Do you think Jesus could tell them all about these things? No. He could try. But, but in the end, they just kind of won't get it. They'll be a little stumped, like trying to figure out how that big flock of birds worked up in the sky. Instead, do you know what Jesus says? Jesus says, come and see. Come and see what this is all about. Come and see how God's love works for each of us. See, do you think, do you, think you could describe all the things we do here at church to other people? Oh, no. Oh, no, Coda says. No. There's too many hour, things. Isn't an hour of... 
It's an hour of all this stuff, he says. It would take, it would, a day. It would take a day to explain. No, instead, what can we say? We can say, you know what? Come and see. Come and see the ways that we show God's love by singing together, by praying together, by dipping our hands in the water, by feeding people, by making sure that others have clothing, by making sure they have all the things we need. These are all the ways we show God's love. And sometimes we can't describe it. Sometimes we just have to say, you know what? Come and see. So I tell you what, the next time you see something that's really hard to describe, or the next time, the next time that you're curious about something that you don't always understand, can you remember? Can you remember how much God has promised to love you in ways that we can't even picture? And can you remember that sometimes all we got to do is come along and see? Can you remember that? Cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, there's a couple things we should do before we head back to our seats. What do you think they are? Pray. Pray. Dip our hands in the water. Get, dip our hands in the water. Why do I talk so fast? Because yeah. we got yeah. candy to get to. Every time, you say, every time you say that, you talk so fast. Boy, I'm just getting put on blast this morning, aren't I? Every time I say that, I talk so fast. I'll slow it down for you, Wade. <laughs> Let's get some candy. Before we head back to, oh, that's worse. That's worse. All right. Well, then let's just do what we do best. Let's fold our hands up, bow our heads, because that helps us concentrate when we pray together. Dear God, we give you so much thanks for the enormous picture of your love that you have given to us. Help us to show those signs of your love to all the people around us, even when we don't always understand. But help us to come along and see your love working for us and working for all of the people around us. But most especially, God, we thank you for sending to us your son, Jesus, so that we might know that always and no matter what, no matter where we are and no matter where we go, you promise to love us always and no matter what. For we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Was that slow enough for you? terrible. He says, all right, all right. Everyone's a critic. I get it. All right. We can go ahead and get one of these lollipops and get a coloring sheet before we head back to our seats. Today, what's that? Oh, that's an excellent drawing, Madeline. That's so good. Perfect. Send that home for mommy. I love it. And today you can color in this, this picture of the church and you can say, what's something that we can show others about our church? I'll slow. I'm talking too fast again, he says. <laughs> I'll pick it in the middle part. Is this an okay middle part? If you want to draw, you can draw something about church that you would show to other people. And you can draw somebody that you would want to take to meet Jesus sometime. How does that sound? Am I keeping a good enough pace? I'll keep it going like this. Is this working out? Excellent. Thank you guys for being here in church this morning. I'm so glad to see you all. Boy, howdy. Now you're getting too loud. Now I'm getting too loud. <laughs> Some people beg to differ, Wade. Some people beg to differ. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, I think Marilyn paid Wade to say everything this morning. <laughs> yeah, she smiles behind the pulpit. That's the, behind the piano. That's nice. Um, do, you, uh, <laughs> do you know what the acronym FOMO means? Have we heard this before? It's a very millennial term. Do you know what this term stands for? F-O-M-O, -O, FOMO. It's a word that gets tossed around. It means the fear of missing out. It's that sensation you get when you know that all of your friends are hanging out at a party together and you didn't get invited. That's FOMO. It's, it's the feeling of, of, of knowing that others are going on a trip all together, but you couldn't make it work with your schedule. That's FOMO. It's the fear of missing out. I remember... I remember the first time I ever had a lesson in FOMO, in the fear of missing out, sent to me. I had to have been about Wade's age, actually. And it was nothing big. But this is one of those, there's one of those dumb memories that lives in the back of your brain permanently for the rest of your entire life, even though it was inconsequential in the moment. This memory, I, I was at my grandmother's house. And I can remember playing on my grandmother's PlayStation in the living room, right? And all of the rest of my family was gathered around the kitchen table two rooms down the hall. And suddenly, while I was in the middle of the game, I heard my grandmother shouting down the hall, Justin, come look, come look, come look, without any further explanation. But here's the thing, young Justin was in the middle of a video game, <laughs> and young Justin had a level that he needed to beat. So you know what young Justin did? 
he beat the level first. <laughs> and then he moseyed on down the hall to see the whole family cleaning up this big old mess of Dr. Pepper. Apparently, in the interim, the soda had exploded across the kitchen table. You know, one of those kind of like fountain geysers of soda where somebody accidentally shakes the bottle a little too much and it foamed up almost all the way to the ceiling. And my grandmother's trying to tell me about it, but she said, oh, you were just too slow. <laughs> you just missed it. You didn't get to see the picture. And now, almost 30 years later, <laughs> Justin is still stewing over this moment. I missed out on seeing something fun and seeing something exciting. I was disappointed, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. It was stupid Dr. Pepper exploding all over the table. You've seen it once. You've seen it a thousand times. But in that moment, everyone else got to be a part of the journey. I had missed out. And now, for 30-some-odd years, I will always fear missing out again. My FOMO is at an all-time high. I don't know about all yours. And when we arrive at this morning's gospel text, it seems, it seems to me that there's a real opportunity, or rather, there's a fear of missing out on an opportunity at hand. Now, don't get me wrong. There's no, there's no fountain of soda. There's no Dr. Pepper spilling all over the place. There's not even, in this text for this morning, there's not even vats of water being turned into wine. But there is, there is an urgency to this morning's gospel text. Did you catch it? There's a sense of, of a timely call that demands a response. And, and maybe, maybe there just might be a little bit of lingering fear of missing out on what it might mean. It starts this morning with our dearly beloved John the Baptist. And, and here, John the Baptist is doing what he does best. He's pointing the way to Jesus. I mean, having just reached the culmination of John the Gospel writer's sweeping prologue that, that reminds those of us who are reading of the eternal word of God now entering into the world in the flesh, we now see the first movements of that incarnation at hand with a reminder that, that the one sent from God named John was not himself the light, but rather came to testify to that light, we at last see this testimony taking place. After tiptoeing around the lines of questioning about his identity from the religious officials in the verses leading up to today's text, finally, finally, John is given the opportunity to do his dang job and point to the Messiah in their midst. As he catches sight of Jesus himself now entering onto the sea, John doesn't miss a beat before he makes his declaration. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, he exclaims. This is the one who I've been telling you about. At last, John is able to physically point the way to the Messiah of whom he has been speaking. There, this is him. This is the one who, as John himself attests, makes the Baptist unworthy to stoop down and even untie the thong of his sandal. In this moment, John fulfills his prescribed role as witness to testify to this light now entering into the world. And testify he does. Even as he points to Jesus at his arrival, John tells the crowds listening about the power of of what he has seen in this Jesus. He shares with them that the sight of the very Spirit of God descending from heaven and remaining on this Jesus who is now crossing the road in front of them. He tells them about the declaration that he himself heard, that the one who sent him made clear that this descending of the Spirit is, an, in fact, an affirmation of John's discernment. This is the one whom he has been sent to proclaim. This is the Son of God. With all that he has, with the testimony of his words and the witness of his entire life, John the Baptist now emphatically points to the hope of God's presence walking among God's people. With such an impassioned response from John, then, it's no wonder it's no wonder that, that when Jesus arrives again on the next day, that, that when John once more announces the proximity of this Lamb of God, it's no wonder that a few of his own disciples take off after that Jesus in order to see 
what he's all about. And you can imagine it. You can imagine the, the anticipation of the disciples shuffling off after this Jesus. I mean, for all that they had heard and seen from John, for all the stock that they had placed in this Messiah's arrival, surely, surely their excitement and their expectations must have been sky high at this point. You can imagine, knees weak, palms sweaty. You, you, you have to figure that, that they were more than a little nervous to now, after all of the declarations and after all of the pointing, to now finally have the chance to meet this God in the flesh. I mean, no pressure or anything. But it must be why then that it seems that Jesus catches these two disciples nearly slack-jawed when he turns to them when they've come to follow and asks them, what is it that you are looking for? I mean, because among the myriad of good and timely responses to such a question from Jesus, it it seems to me that the disciples could have probably come up with a better answer to the question of what it was that they were looking for, huh? I mean, the disciples could have said to Jesus, you know, we are looking for the hope of the world. Or, Or they could have said, we're looking for the salvation of our people. Or they could have said, we're looking for proof that John was right about you and that you are the incarnation of God among us. I mean, all of these, to me at least, seem like better answers than what they actually say in return to Jesus. Did you catch it? Maybe, maybe they're stammering their way through. But, but it seems that their gobstacked, gobsmacked state of being ultimately leads them to ask a silly question back to this Lamb of God. Because it seems that all that they are able to eke out is to ask Jesus in turn, where are you staying? It's such a simple question to ask of this Jesus, this word made flesh. And yet in response, Jesus offers an even more simple reply. Where are you staying? (laughs) Well, come and see, Jesus says. Come and see. Like my grandmother shouting from down the hall, come look, right? There is an invitation to see something new. Now, thankfully, where I ignored the call from the kitchen to see that exciting thing in order to keep playing PlayStation, the disciples instead wisely take up this invitation set out by Jesus. To be clear, the stakes are higher than an exploding bottle of Dr. Pepper, but the FOMO nevertheless holds in the moment. Or rather, the, the, the fact that the disciples don't miss out on the opportunity holds true. In heeding this invitation from Jesus to come and see, in actually taking the next steps in bearing witness to this Messiah, just as John the Baptist had, these two disciples now garner a new testimony to something absolutely incredible taking place in their midst. Because whatever it is that goes on for the rest of that day, from four o'clock onward, it's enough to leave these disciples with a new and with a certain conviction. And there's almost no time in turnaround before Andrew is now racing off to find his brother Simon and share with him the certainty that they have found this Messiah. As he races off with Simon in tow, Andrew now embodies the same invitation that Jesus first gave him and his compatriot. To just come and see. It's that invitation once again then that, that meets Simon now and changes everything for him. I mean, quite literally in this case, as from this encounter, Simon undergoes a change in identity to become Cephas, to become Peter, the rock on whom this Jesus following way will be built. See, it's this question then, this question raised by those first disciples and the subsequent invitation from Jesus that become the foundation for everything else that follows. Because the truth is, the truth is there's a great deal of implication to the question those first two disciples ask of Jesus. To ask where it is that he is staying, to, to ask where the very heart of God has chosen to take up residence is a profoundly deep question to plumb. To ask where Jesus is staying 
is to ask where this eternal word has decided to dwell. To ask where he is staying is to ask where God has chosen to prioritize God's attention in this world. The simplicity of Jesus' response then to, to come and see, he offers an answer as shocking as it is profound. And to come and see where this Son of God is staying is to now see the world, to see their world as the dwelling, as the staying place of God. This exchange of question and answer, then, is not one to be understated. If this is Jesus' entrance into the world, then, then it's one that responds to the important question of where God's care in this world will start. Turns out John's excitement and his pointing was worth the effort. The, the eternal word of God is staying with the world. The same world that came into being through him. God is coming to stay with God's beloved. And now, now 2,000 years later, that, that depth of truth holds the same. God is staying in this world. God is staying with you. This Lamb of God, this Messiah, God's very Son, the eternal Word, has entered into this world for you. You have been called into this holy dance with the God in residence among God's people. God does not wait for you to uproot yourself and relocate into a better position but rather God comes to you and stays there, bringing you the fullness of God's love and promising you the fullness of God's life. Now, just like those first disciples, this staying power of God has the capacity to change everything. Because when this Jesus chooses to stay in this world, it means that God is staying with those who have been shunned from the centers of society. So you better come and see. When Jesus stays in this world, it means that God is staying with those accounted as sinners and as suspect. So you better come and see. When Jesus shows us where he is staying, we find that it is scandalously alongside the likes of tax collectors and prostitutes. So come and see. When Jesus shows us where he is staying in this world, we find him with the poor and with the meek and the hungry, with the naked and the prisoner and those without home. So come and see. When this Jesus chooses to stay in this world, it means that God is staying in the places where we would have missed out on our own. So come and see. And now, and now when Jesus stays in our world, it might be in those same unexpected places. When Jesus stays in our world, it might be among those lined up for a second helping at the community meal. So come and see. When Jesus stays in our world, it, it might just be with a nervous and extended hand ready to receive a bag of diapers. So come and see. When Jesus stays in our world, it might just be with those still trying to figure out if a new name or if a new pronoun might just fit us better, just like it did for Peter. So come and see. When Jesus stays in our world, it might just be with those who are staying across a boundary that we've made and are afraid of being sent back across it. So come and see. When Jesus stays in our world, it might still be in the places that left to our own we would otherwise overlook. So come and see. Don't miss out. Come and see. See where this Lamb of God has taken up re residence. See where this God is meeting you here and now. Come and see where God is calling you to follow in John's legacy and to point the way to that holy life taking root in this world. Come and see where it is that Jesus is staying. 
and then join the Baptist in this process of pointing the way to the rest of this world. Don't miss out. Come and see. Amen. Please rise in spirit or in bodies. We join together in singing our hymn of the day, 696, Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult, down on page 8 of the bulletin. Together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. called together to follow Jesus. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Put a new song in the mouth of your church. Inspire the baptized to tell of your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of our missionaries. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The waters of baptism call unto us into new life in the Spirit. Preserve the world's waters, protect them from pollution, support plants and animals who depend on them, and bring rain in places of drought. Guide us in protecting local waterways and in responding to devastating floods. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In Jesus, you are the Lamb of God, whom takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. 
filled governing bodies with righteousness and equipped judges with discernment and compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You incline your ear to all who cry to you. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence, injustice, illness, or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness. And at this time, we ask that you be with those with whom we name unto you. For Mary, for the family and friends of Leanne. For these we pray and for those we feel within our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are glorified in the servants you have called. With Martin Luther King Jr., give us bold trust in you, even when it feels like a sharp sword or polished arrow. Give us courage to receive your call to repentance and racial injustice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In every place and time, you have sanctified your people we praise you for the testimony of those who have died in the faith. Strengthen us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share signs of that peace with one another. Oh, yeah? Peace. this morning's offering we just continue to thank you for your continued generosity and the, all the ways you partner with the ministries here united in christ there are a couple different ways you can share your offering with us this morning you may either place your um physical checks in the envelopes in uh in the what are those offering plates, the offering plates as they go. <laughs> cool brain fart as they go around you may also then skew, uh, scan the qr code either found in the bulletin or in a insert in the back of the pew and you may also then place the insert in the offering plate as they go around however you choose to share your yourselves with this ministry we continue to thank you the big metal saucer oh my gosh <laughs> you can't take me anywhere <laughs> Thank you. 
driven by. break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Your, our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say amen. 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 Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, and let the church say amen. 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 Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age. They're rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection. We might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here at United in Christ, we understand that this invitation to communion is Christ's invitation. And thus all gather to your welcome at this table. We may come forward in the center aisle making two lines to take a glass on your way forward and to receive the bread and to receive the wine and return to our seats by the side aisles, placing our empty glasses in the trays as we go. Should you need or prefer, we do have grape juice and gluten-free wafers available. Please just let us know as you come forward. But come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Please be seated. this day and always. Amen. Donna, this is the body of Christ given for you. Al, this is the body of Christ given for you. Alicia, this is the body of Christ given for you. Pam, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you, Jane. Mike, this is the body of Christ given for you. Teresa, this is the body of Christ given for you. Bob, this is the body of Christ given for you. Somewhere in here. Trudy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Bob, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. given for you. George, this is the body of Christ given for you. Kathy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Glenn, this is the body of Christ given for you. John, this is the body of Christ given for you. Justin, this is the body of Christ given for you. Nicole, this is the body of Christ given for you. Karen, this is the body of Christ given for you. Dave, this is the body of Christ given for you. Nancy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Mel, this is the body of Christ given for you.
the body of Christ given for you. Wade, this is the body of Christ given for you. And Scarlet. No, maybe. Scarlet. This is the body of Christ given for you. Coda, this is the body of Christ given for you. Alright, well, I'll keep that in mind for the future. Mary Lou. <laughs> this is the body of Christ given for you. And Katie. This is the body of Christ given for you. Ken, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Layla, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. shed for you. He does not want. Coda, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Mary Lou, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Katie, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. rise in spirit and body. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christ's grace. Amen. Amen. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. Now the God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in singing our sending hymn number 677, This Little Light of Mine, found on page 16 of the bulletin. Oh, 
light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Go in peace. Follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God.